Our today's topic is about the fossil form and function and in this topic we will be further discussing the growth and form from the continuation of the previous lecture. In the previous lecture we have discussed that what is form and what is its importance. Today we will be discussing that what are the different variation among the species which result into the fossil form and that's why we are able to get the different fossils from the same species. So that results into the variation within the species. Within a species there may be a range of morphologies. Uh, there might be some individual variation. An organism, a brother is different from a sister. An organism is always different from another organism if they are belonging to the same species. Even if, if they are the brothers and sisters. But if they are identical twins, then there is some less variation. And if there is any, that is due to the environmental variation. And this results in, uh, into the natural selection. As it says that the individual variation is the stuff of natural selection, as Darwin stressed. So Darwin stressed the idea that within a species there is some variation. And that variation goes up to a certain point if a species is, you know, separated from a main parent species, it will be diverged into the new species and that process is called speciation. So now, what are the things which are causing the variation within the species? Suppose there was an organism, an ancient organism A that was living in a area C, right? And in that area C, there was some, uh, the area C was divided due to some uh, geographical barrier. There was some river that started flowing there, or there was some, inch, uh, there was some uh, mountains uh, due to the collision of plates, there were some mountains formed. So due to that geographical barrier, what will happen? The population of the species will be divided into two parts and each part will be developing into different species through the process of speciation. So geographical variations and physical differences between the population and subspecies in different parts of overall species range will result into the variation within the species. So if they are coming uh, within the limit, they still be the same species, but due to the geographical barriers, they will become the different uh, organisms or the uh, different, they have the difference among themselves. And then uh, the next pa uh, uh, the, the next type of the uh, variation within the species is the sexual dimorphism. Sexual means it is related to the genders of the sexes male and female. And di means to morphism the structures or the appearances. So male and female have different appearances. The common example that we have already discussed is of peacock. Male peacock is very beautiful, very good plumage. The female is not so beautiful, but still it has its own importance. So the male and female are different and that we can see in case of fossils as well. In the form of fossil, we can see that differences as well. So, and uh, the sexual dimorphism in which males and females may show different sizes and different specialized features, such as horns, antlers, tail feathers, right? So here you can see a diagram in which A is the larger shell while B is the smaller shell of a fossil. So sexual dimorphism in ammonites, the Jurassic Cosmoceros, the larger shell was probably the female, right? And the smaller, the male. And this was the picture which was taken by the Jim Kennedy and Peter Skelton. So in this picture, you can see that the male is smaller while the female is larger. And of course, it makes sense. The female has to lay eggs. It has to give rise to the children or the babies or whatever we will call the, those for the ammonites. In the next slide, we will be discussing about the variation within the species in which we will be discussing about the growth stages. The growth stages are when an embryo develops into a, an adult organism. So in between that, the embryo has different forms or the different structures. And those different structures are also different, making the species different, right? So or when organism is, you know, a neonate, it is developing into an adult species. So that will also have the 
some of the variation so growth stages where there may be quite different larval and adult stages or where body form alters during growth so when organism is growing it has different life forms and we will be discussing that later as well so and other one is the eco phenotypic effects uh, the environment also affects the body right so if there is some uh, less salts in some water for example the uh, uh, fresh water has very less amount of salt so there will be less calcification in the shells of the uh, the shelled organisms for example the mussels or the snails they have less calcium in their body forms and if they are living in the marine environment there are more calcium in the water so they, their shells will be more heavy or the more calcified so the local or ecological condition affect in the form of an organism during its lifetime so in within the species if they are living on the different habitats that can affect their body forms as well and now the uh, as we were discussing previously that there are some changes in the form during the uh, growth and th that function is called allometry allo means different and metry means the measurement so their body measures differently at different stages of the life so for example think of the human growth the babies have relatively large heads eyes and small limbs right so if you see a baby has large head small limbs but as it grows into an adult the body proportions are different so if measurements of the variable parts are scaled against a standard measure of the animal it is evident the proportion change as the animal grows older right so the proportion of the head of a baby is larger as compared to an adult so this is evident and this is this function is called allometry and here you have the diagram in which you can see the adult female right so in the upper diagram a from lower jurassic somerset england and it is showing an embryo that has been born right so this animal was giving birth to uh, an embryo when it died or it had an embryo in its body when it died so in this picture you can see an embryo as well as uh, an adult female so you can see the bigger diagram which is b so it is the detailed of a curl embryo in the b so you can just compare what are the different forms and different structures of two fossils one fossil is of an embryo and one of fossil is of adult and you can you know compare it and see the proportions of it in terms of allometry now the allometric growth that is you know the an organism grows the different proportions with the different proportions its org organs grow as well and that growth is called allometric growth the ratio of eye diameter to to the body length diminishes as the animal approaches adulthood and this is an example of allometric or different measure growth and if does not happen then it is called isometric growth if there is no change in the proportions during the growth the feature is said to be show the isometric or same measure growth and now this whole thing comes down to a biological scaling principle that some organs and function relate to a mass of an animal for example an organism uh, which has the bigger size will have much stronger and larger legs as compared to the an organism which has smaller mass it will have the less strong uh, legs or the less developed legs and other relate to the body length or body outline uh, one or two dimensional measures so all of these things these are influencing the fossil form and function